So one of the things about this whole chaos set is that I glued the heads in most of them, but I left one of them alone for me to paint just as an individual so I can do it up close and pay a bit more attention to it. And that's an interesting way of getting better, uh, practicing and just trying things out when you're just dealing with a face rather than dealing with the rest of the body. Again, same principles, black, prime, zenithal, white, time to get the skin colors down. I needed to go and try and match the other skin colors, so I was using my Pink Flesh Violet Gray from Scale Artist and a bit of other skin tones together, little blues, a little green, and some white for the highlights and stuff like that. So I generally take the dark base color that I'm gonna utilize and start doing all of the skin. Skin is complicated, and you can kind of take it as far as you want to go with it and or as simple as you want to go with it. You can do the whole thing one color, or you can try and get fun with it and put different colors in different places. We kind of know that like in models that we would have darker areas just underneath our eyebrows, it tends to be here for like maybe men, for instance, might have a bit of a gray, you know, stubble. It will be more shadowed here. Um, we tend to be a little rosier here or the brighter light, when the bright light, light falls, it will tend to be on our nose or the bridge of our nose like right here, uh, maybe even on the cheeks type of thing, or especially on the forehead. So we kind of try to take all of those things into account. Of course, you could go the other way. You could just paint all of it one color, throw a wash on it, do a tiny few little details on top of it and call it done. And you, you know, but just go with me on this one. So I started with the muted pink kind of color, and then I went for a greenish color down here. It didn't really matter if it was greenish here because eventually I'm gonna cover it all over anyway and it's just gonna be my base color, which means that it will give an interesting effect, perhaps, hopefully, if I use my thin my paints well enough to be sort of hidden underneath it. So with the green and blue that I had there, I ended up painting a little bit of a sort of darker purple again on top of it. And it sort of allowed that the skin tone to look more uniform from point A to point B, from the sort of this area to on the top side of my head and creating those sort of shadows that I was looking for. And as I blended them together, uh, just making sure that, the, you know, pulling those colors about, it was getting to a point where it was looking pretty good. One of the things about skin when it comes to like these small models is you need to leave the base colors alone, kind of. So what I mean is on a, on a regular person's face, it's not dark here, not really. But when it comes to a miniature, we need to define it because it's so small that our eyes have a hard time separating the elements that exist there. So the nose is different than part of the face, even though it's obviously part of the face, or that the eye or the ears and stuff like that, we need in the mouth, we need them to be defined. They need to look like the thing that they are. And the only way we can do that is by making sure that there is contrast that exists for our eyes to see. So the base purple uh, that I was utilizing, as you build up layers above it, you need to leave those areas kind of alone. So what you'll see with painters they'll do is that they will leave them alone and then they'll use a glaze and go between the dark and the light. So they're effectively, they're connecting the two. So it looks like a nice gradient. Um, but they're also making sure that the darker areas stay somewhat dark and so that your eyes can see those contrasts, which allows us to see the model the way that we want to see it. As you kind of get your lines situated, I use white, just paint the teeth, paint the eyes. We'll kind of go back over them shortly at some point. And now I'm going to a bit more of a regular skin tone, sort of like an orangey, yeah, more of an orangey kind of skin tone and painting loosely and lightly on top of our purple, giving us a nice kind of color, making it look at least alive, but also still a little strange, which is nice. As you build your mixtures, one of the things that you should do when it comes to like faces, any kind of skin tone, any kind of tones is that you take your original color that you've got that you've been creating. So your base tone starts with a darker purple and then you move to a bit of an orange. You're always using a bit of the colors that you've had into the palette that you mix. So as I build up my subsequent layers, I'm always utilizing some of those colors additionally into the, into the mix. So even my white air color or the whitish color that I'm using to start bringing out the highlights, have a little bit of the orange, have a little bit of that purple in there to make sure that everything stays cohesive. It's very useful to learn to get control of the amount of paint and how thin your paints are. This is where we need to like really get control of 
kind of glazing, but like an in-between glaze. We definitely want to put a layer down, but we also want to make it thin enough that it doesn't look so jarring between each individual layer. We're trying to make it so that we're building them up gradually so it looks like an appropriate gradient and looks good because it's the face and we need to spend a bit of time on it. Once you get the general lights down, you've got your dark points, you've got your areas in which you've got your contrast and things are looking good. Um, it is nice to kind of go over skin with a little bit of glazing, just light glazing of different colors. I kind of think it's nice to go with a little bit of a nice crimson color to kind of add a bit of life back to the skin in certain places. It can also be nice to do it with a little gray if you wanted to like create shadows. Uh, blues can work as a shadow, uh, depending. So work playing with a few colors, like a bit of greens, little blues, little reds, even a little yellows can be really nice as you mix them together. And you can put them in different spots to kind of create just a nice interesting effect on the skin itself because not all skin is just so completely uniform. And especially in the environments that these people are in, it's probably not that normal really. So you can kind of go to town. But we're being very, very careful. We're glazing areas. We're just trying to pick out little spots and just, you know, make it feel cool. Yeah, and there you have it. So you can see the colors that I utilized in my skin tones. Now I recognize that maybe not everyone wants to spend the amount of time that it takes to paint one face like this, but it's definitely good practice to do so. 